Yo, what's going on? This is a new episode of Tribe Table Talk. What's going on, Tribe? What's going on? Pat, what's up? What's up, fellas? Yeah. Feeling real good. Feeling real great. How are yeah. you? I'm good. I can't complain. I am not as sleepy as I thought I would be. Um, I got this coffee popping right here. Um, first night with the puppy. So it was uh, whining in the middle of the night. So that kind of had me up a little bit. But um, mm-hmm. Other than that, so last week I had the episode number wrong. I think I said 19. We, that was actually supposed to be 20. So today is episode 21. There we go. Nice. You know what yeah, I mean? We're on track, man. So today episode is kind of spontaneous, man. We uh, we didn't do any of this stuff beforehand. We're going to kind of uh, explore some questions that, you know, our answers are going to be live. So we didn't have no uh, before thought or, you know, uh, answers no pre, pre pre-scripted answers nothing like that so today yeah. we're gonna be talking about uh was it number seven i think um com- seven. most common okay number seven most common issue in marriage and it is different life stages all right so um yeah you guys know when we get married you your body might look a certain way time goes on you know you might put on some pounds your wife has kids her body changes personalities change people evolve you know we all can say in this group that we're probably different a whole lot different than we were when we first said i do you know what i mean so um interests change hobbies change and all that kind of good stuff um so how do we deal with those yeah bank accounts change absolutely absolutely so how do we deal with those different life stages um let's kind of explore that let's put it all on the table man ding 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 So we, um, yeah, man, off camera, we was talking about the topic of, uh, you know, you look a certain way, you know what I'm saying? You, some of us, you know, like, like, like Cal, you know, he, he married his high school sweetheart, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm sure he had the athletic build and his wife was, you know, had the high school shape, you know, and then you have kids and, you know, as a husband, you get, you get a little spoiled, you, you know, eating it up and you're not really as active as it used to be. And, you know, um, you know, how do you, how do you deal with the weight gain as husbands? And as husbands or the, the personal weight gain? Yeah, yeah. that Both, was hard yeah. to, yeah, the, the personal weight gain for me, I gained like 20 pounds, like my first year of Woo. marriage. It was crazy. Um, and I didn't notice it until I just randomly looked on the scale one day. I was like, what is happening? And you looked down, you couldn't see your feet anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking swollen <laughs> good hanging out i'm like yo but um but yeah it's just uh i think we were in an apartment still that first year first couple of years um and so we were right next to a gym and so we would go to the gym together and so that's kind of how we you know that was a good relationship builder for us as well um but it also helped us you know realize that you know we gotta stay and shape and things like that but um you know once kids came around um the same thing started to happen it's like you get comfortable you, you know running around with the kids um and then you just kind of lose track of those things those healthy habits and so Man. we're in that stage right now where we're back to working out together again just because it's important and we talked about on a couple episodes of you know yeah. how it's important to stay healthy and you know give your so ha- having enough energy to be able to give your family everything. Um, yeah. 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 yeah so, so, so did, did, uh, the Savannah tell you like, man, you getting kind of big, Cal. We, we, we need to, like, <laughs> yeah, that, let's, I was going to, I was going to ask that question. You're going like, to look like, thicker, my brother. Hey, we need to work out. Is that how it happened? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, not the first time around. It was more of a self-reflection thing. I'm like, yeah, I've never weighed whatever well i was like 220 230 or something like that i've never weighed this much and so that was just kind of an eye-opener for me yeah. um so yeah that was more self-reflecting but she has taken jabs on me like in the last you know few years and stuff when we you know started to work start work back working out again together um it's like dang you know you could you know your chest looking kind of deflated so she used to uh, throw jabs uh, at me uh, i ain't mad so- at it. Is it, okay? is it okay? Is it okay? Okay, so that makes me go there. harder though. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Kenny. I know <laughs> where you're going, bro. So is it okay <laughs> when a wife you see it behind me? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I bought right, it so that day. Is it okay? 
Yeah, the motivation the wives can give us sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, man. Uh, so it's okay as husbands, man, when that happens. When the wife takes a jab or you throw a little jab back. Like she said, oh, your chest is getting deflated. <laughs> is it okay for a husband to be like, hey, I mean, you know, you got a little gut right here too yourself. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I was gonna say y'all boys married, man. Y'all, I mean, y'all been long married Listen, longer than me, man. How do how do y'all now? I, I, I am not saying any comment on any of <laughs> I'm steering clear, bro. I'm steering oh. clear. Go ahead, go ahead, D. Go ahead, Cal. Answer the question. I can't oh. answer it, man. I ain't honestly I ain't, I ain't been in that situation when it comes to weight gain. Like it was, you know, different stuff, like oh you know, being yeah. tall or something like that, being taller than my wife. Like if you get your tall self up and get that. I'm like, why don't you just climb the counter and get it? You, know, you, can, <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. Let me get you a broom. Yeah, no, sure. we ain't, right. she ain't she ain't hit me in the in the weight area yet. Even though, yeah. like you said, man, getting married those first few years, you're eating good and feeling nice, and you know, coming from a nice two forty five close to three, mm. it's kind of it's kind of different, uh, you know, up here in these in these pounds, man. So I gotta you know, get back on that weight loss track so I can be able to dunk on people again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's more of a self-reflection. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. 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 Uh, is, is it right, though, if if there is uh, maybe some type of feeling, if it is, I mean, weight is controversial. Weight is a hard thing to talk about from a male perspective and probably even more from a female perspective. Is, is it right to have those dialogues and how is the proper way to have those dialogues if you are to have the dialogue attack it head on man just straight up hey go for the jugular you know yeah, yeah. girl you man. fat what's up with that just ask questions <laughs> yeah i know dang well he'll be talking to jugular like that. <laughs> exactly no i'll be asking one of y'all hey man you got the keys to the garage man let me let me crash <laughs> you <laughs> had exactly. to hey you gotta be like you gotta lead the way man as a husband like you're like, hey, baby, I, I'm a, you know, I feel like I need to get in shape. I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna start working out. Mm. You know, sometimes, she, you know, sometimes, sometimes she might follow in your footsteps. Sometimes mm-hmm. she, she not. You know, hey, what, mm-hmm. what can you do? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you got to kind of slide it in there a little bit. Like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go work out. You know, hey, we should do it together. You know, kind of like a couple's thing. You mm-hmm. know. It's a nice way. It's a nice way of saying you can kind of big. We gotta. We both gotta lose weight. That's how you do it right here. You go work out and be like, man, them girls in the gym crazy, man. <laughs> oh, good luck, D, D, D. This whole podcast, this whole session is about how. <laughs> it's about the top reason people get divorced to avoid divorce. <laughs> to avoid. If your wife and we talk gym, about how to you avoid good. divorce. You talking about you see them other girls in the gym? No, I didn't say you see. I'm just saying, man, those other girls in the gym, crazy. What other girls? And then that'll make, that might be her motivation to go to the gym with you. I don't know. It might be a motivation for a different conversation. <laughs> Maybe for you. Maybe your gym passes revokes. No more gym for you. Yeah. And that might happen. just going to be unhealthy uh, than a mug, man. Yeah. Hey, I do I got do. a question, though. Hey, was, you know, I saw music by Music Soul Child. Um, Lately, you've been, I, you know, I can't sing. Uh, Hit that note. I didn't try though. I, I, well, how did how's it go? It says, I love you when your hair turns gray. I still love you I if you gain you a little weight. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I still I love song. you if you gain a little weight. You know what I'm talking about, Ken? No, you got to hit, you got to share that song in the, the chat, name. though. I'll share it in the chat. So that's what he's talking about. He said, I love you if your hair turns gray. I'll, I'll still love you if you gain a little weight, girl. The way I feel for you will always remain the same just as long as your love doesn't change. Mm. Is that a true Ooh, factor? Bars. Is that a true factor when it comes to marriage? And is that how it should be as well? Y'all yeah, want to hey. educate me, man. School through, me. Through thick and thin, literally. Mm. Where, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, these things are going to happen, man. If you are based, if, 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 if you are, if your love is based on your wife uh, only, her looks you know what i mean and then when that changes you know because the bible says beauty is fleeting you know um not saying that my wives you know after they have babies they get ugly i'm just saying like you don't look the same you know uh as you progress through life you know you get older like i said you get a little bigger 
Um, you know, I'm glad you brought up the gray hair. Age happens too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I look at my I pictures of myself 15 years ago. I'm like, dang, I used to look like that. You know, body smaller, you know, just, you know, different, you know, and it's like, um, you know, learning to, because, you know, as you get older and as your wife gets older, you know, uh, sometimes your flesh will notice other women who still in their twenties and they tip top shape. Yeah. And you can sometimes, uh, lust in your heart, you know, after other women who are, you know, who look like how your wife used to look like, you know what I mean? Um, so we have to kind of stay grounded in the Lord and, and just, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, be satisfied, you know what I mean? In our wives and love them because that is hard for them too. You know, that, you know, women take a lot of, uh, you know, pride in their appearance and mm-hmm. their looks and their hair and they, you know, so they are cognizant of those changes too. Yeah. And so we have to be supportive as husbands, man. And not be so hard because they they sometimes they they that's you know that that choice to have ch- children is a beautiful thing but it's it's a sacrifice on their bodies too mm-hmm. you know what i mean um sure. so yeah i mean it's it's definitely like you know making sure you ground in the lord making sure you and then make sure on top of that that she is doing the same thing with you you know if you one of those dudes that you know since you since she married you you gained 20 30 pounds she you know, she might be sometimes noticing the skinny guys again, too, you know, and she has to be, you know, still loving on you at this, you know, during that change in your life, too. So, yeah. 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 yeah and I right. think we're we're called to become one. Right. And I feel like husbands were called to you know cultivate. And I feel like it just as believers is to, you know, cultivate the relationships. And as we're becoming one, we notice those things. Um you know, back to my point, it's like, we should, you know, we should talk about like how to go talk about more about how to go about handling those situations and not yeah. being, you know, blunt and, you know, disrespectful right. or anything like that. But yeah. um, it's imp- health is important. And yeah. so it's, you shouldn't be afraid to talk about those things as a couple and be like, you know, yeah. our health is whatever it is right now. Um, but we should be taking steps. Like we should be taking vitamins. We should be exercising right. regularly. We should, yeah. you know, even as a family, you know, I, my, I incorporate my kids, <clears throat> making sure they have like a, they're outside a lot, you know, they're moving around just because kids, yeah. can, you know, go through those stages too, yeah, um, right. as far as weight gain, especially early on. So just creating healthy habits. And that's what we should be doing Sorry. as, as families in general is having that at the forefront is, is being healthy. I hear that. Yeah. And though I, I, oh, my ahead, fault, yeah. no, I was going to say, yeah, I, you know, I know I'm over here talking crazy and I play a lot on this podcast, but <clears throat> everything that Cal says, right. Like getting back into a routine of, you know, working out and, you know, getting, the, getting in shape just for health reasons, man, you got kids and just trying to make it happen for them. So you, you're trying to be in their life as long as possible. Yeah. So I, I, is our temple. I agree. I agree. I, I think, Ken, you said something that made me think too, as well. I think what's important <clears throat> is as a, as a husband, if we're talking specifically to a husband is leading by example, yeah. right. In marriage. Right. So there, there are times that you may have moments of controversy or disagreement where you want to fight fire with fire, where you be like tit for tat. Um, there are times where you be like, you don't do this. Why should I do this? Yeah. You're going to have them times too. Yeah. You're going to have times where you be like, well, you telling me, yeah, you know I mean, you're going to have times um, where um, you're, you're going to have challenges. Don't get me wrong. Uh, or even times where you think things should go a certain way. Um, and to me, the best way to react is just like Christ reacted. Mm-hmm. Right. He said, follow me. Yep. Right. And, and then, um, and then everything he did, he said, and then he showed, the disciples he showed the people who followed him he showed him how to live he showed him how to be um and and that was the greatest example that he could show even husbands or right. or individuals in this world but if i'm speaking directly to husbands it's like follow me and i'm basically yeah. showing you like i'm basically saying okay i am submitted to god and in yeah. my lifestyle you will see that yeah and to me that is the best way to yeah. deal with different life stages and Absolutely. and 
And honestly, Ken, I'll add in there. My second point was um, having setting the table up to have honest dialogue. So my wife and I have the ability to have honest dialogue about many topics. So her and I will talk about the topics of um, lust. Her and I will talk about the topics of marriage and gaining weight. Her and I will hey, talk about the topics of, go ahead, Ken. Yeah, no, go ahead. Because I was just going to tail off of you. Uh, and her and I would talk about these topics that are hard dialogues in marriage. And, and we will just have dialogue about how we feel about it. Mm-hmm. And I, and we have to set the stage. I mean, we that's have healthy. to set the stage to create and, ha and having healthiness in our marriage. And that's part of it. Yeah. Right. Having moments and say, babe, listen, let's just talk about a few things. Like what you think about this? Mm -hmm. And this is not controversial, right? It's not like you getting this. Is, I'm not calling no one out, but right. it's just different topics so, in life. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you guys went through a, a, a life stage, you know, now that I just thought about it as we were talking, you guys went from, you know, you working, and I believe your wife was working or not, maybe not. Um, and then you guys became business owners. Yeah, that that was a uh, that was a life stage change for you guys. So I'm sure with that change becoming a lot of busyness, yeah, um, less time spent together, maybe mm -hmm. yeah. um, with the kids. So tell us, I guess, how you guys handle that life stage. Yeah. And, you know, like how, you know, yeah. Tell me how you guys, I guess, tell us a little bit how you guys, I guess, handled that. Yeah. Or how you handling that? So, uh, with prayer, honestly, <laughs> yeah. if I if I start yeah. up like that, honestly, because I think when we so we got married and that was one big stage, um, thirteen years ago, and then we got uh, kids, and then we went from one to three kids. Having one to two is a life change. Having one to three is a life change. Yeah. Um, but we we learned how to how to deal with that together and have community. Um, but when we went into the business, we never worked together every single day. Mm. And now it's like every day, even though I work full time for another place, I also have uh, HG where I'm working full time as well. And it just brings interesting dynamics now because um, who who leads the, 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 the pack? Who leads the hidden gem who who leads all of this right. and it also brings challenges of how we deal with different situations because honestly we think differently on certain things and we mm -hmm. had to figure out it's, it's just exactly how we got married actually before we got married we had difference in opinions on certain things until we came together right um so in business every day we actually have different controversial things to talk about um and what i have to do personally is learn i had to learn me personally so i at first i was just like no nah, this is how it should be and she was like no nah, i ain't doing that and i'm like no you're gonna do that and she's like no nah, i ain't doing that <laughs> so we were going back and forth all, all like that all day yeah. until i had to personally realize and she may have too but i had to reflect on me and say okay if i'm leading um our organization aeg which owns hg if i'm leading aeg the best leader is someone that sits back and supports, sits back and influences, sits back and encourage, mm -hmm. sits back. Same thing I do with the other, the other position I have, but I wasn't doing it as much as HG because I took my hand and tried to own everything. But until I learned to say, okay, I got to sit back on some of this stuff and learn yeah. and build my, build my wife up as right. one of the leaders in the organization. Right. Um, and then when I decided to do that, things got better. Now, it ain't perfect. It's, it's one of the hardest things we had to deal with ever in business and dealing in life in this moment right now. It's the hardest challenge we have because we're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, I don't think everybody's made to work with they, their, their other, their spouse and mm. see them every single day. Because honestly, think about it, fellas. Y'all, I mean, I don't know about now, but we used to go to work <laughs> in the office all the time, right? I still do. I still yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you I know what I mean? Going. You have that moment. And, and, and then, and then you come back home and you see your kids, you see your wife. It's not that much time together. But now when you're around somebody all the time, you be like, okay, you might get irritated. Yeah. 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 You might get, she might, she get irritated with me all the time. She'd tell me. Yeah. Um, it's just like, you have to learn how to adjust differently and see things differently. And yeah. most importantly, 
you have to learn how how God is so important in every single situation. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, Cam. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, that's good. That's good. I, I just thought about that life stage yeah. with you guys in your certain yeah. situation, you know. Yeah. And like me and Cal, like, you know, we, we me and him and our family decided to homeschool. And that's been a kind of a different life stage, too, and a change that we've had to adjust to, um, you know. Ernest, I, I can totally relate to what you're saying as far as sometimes, you know, uh, being with your being with your family, being with your spouse every day, all day, you know, because I do work from home, not every day, but two days a week. So um, sometimes you can be like in a house with your spouse all day, especially when you have a wife who is kind of like a stay at home mom right now and yeah. your kids are at home all day. Sometimes it can be like, you know, an adjustment where it's like, you, you used to be like, like you used to like, like you said, get home after working eight hours. Yeah. Hey, you know, you know, you kind of, you had that sense of missing your family and missing your wife. And then it's like, when you're with them all day, you get this sense where it's like, oh, I need to get away from y'all for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? And it's not bad. It's just, you have, you, you might have to be adjust a little bit. And I know my wife has done that by like, she got a gym membership, for example. So that's the way she kind of has her time away from the kids she goes mm-hmm. exercises she has she you know she just she has a uh, part-time job where that's her kind of like her time away and um you know we adjusted now it's like now it's like some she gets home from doing what she does she's kind of like i've been with the kids all day i'm gonna sit down and relax and so i kind of like take that you know taking care of the kids aspect at in the evening you know, even though that wasn't we used to be the case, you know, so like that's been kind of a change for us too. you know, dealing with that. And, and yeah. you know, and, and yeah. Yeah. And I, I think uh, one of the misconceptions that are out there too, maybe sometimes in marriage that you you should always um, you never need time apart. I think it's healthy, specifically if you're introverted, because some some of us get energy off of people being around people all the time. Yeah. I think my wife is the only person that I can be around all the time that I never get tired of. I'll be honest with you. But mm-hmm. I will say that we have to have moments too, as well, uh, where we are introverted. She's more introverted than I am. I'm, I'm 60, 40 extrovert, 60, uh, I mean, 40 introverted, meaning this, there's times where I, I get energy. Y'all know, I'll be like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then there's times where I, I gotta, I gotta recharge myself. So I gotta be by myself. I gotta sit still for a second. Um, and she has to do that. And it's kind of like making sure that she has the ability to have those moments will also help her uh, be able to think and build and and analyze. And those are moments that she needs. So being intentional around that, it's okay to have that. It's okay to have moments like that where you're not around the kids or not around your spouse. It's okay to have those moments, but have them in healthy ways. Don't just, don't just leave. You know what I mean, don't just uh, walk away. Don't just like if, if we know of that about each other, whether Ken, you're introverted and Cal, you're extrovert or whatever it is. It's like have that communication with your spouse and say, yeah. OK. Um, and, and as you learn your spouse, this, this is something I had to learn in marriage, actually, through the years, because introvert and extrovert was in terms I existed before I got married. I don't know about you guys. Mm. I don't know if y'all was just like, yeah, I'm introverted and I'm extroverted. You know, what I mean, I wasn't mm. thinking about those terms. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I grew more in my marriage, I was like, oh, okay, these terms are important and they're important because it's how we're wired yeah. and how we, how we are able to operate properly. If we have these moments of being around people or not being around yeah. people, you yeah. know what I mean? So some people like when they get married, you know, like you just kind of brought something up to Ernest as you were talking in my mind, uh, you know, they get married, they're kind of doing everything together. You know, it's like that, that honeymoon stage, you know, Mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, the wife is kind of like, she always want to be with the husband and and vice versa. Um, And I think that sometimes that hardest, one of the hardest parts in marriage is when the spouse, one of the spouses has to realize that the other person wants to kind of sometimes do their own thing away from their spouse. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the guy, sometimes, you know, he wants to go just with the fellas. And you know what I mean? So it's like sometimes at that point, there's like a contention a little bit, maybe. Yeah. And it's not like, and it's like, you know, hey, I don't love you any less. 
I just kind of want to, you know, I kind of want to sometimes, you know, because we can get clingy to each other sometimes. Yeah. We can. You know, wives can get clingy, husbands can get clingy. And, you know, it's like, it's healthy that I want to, you know, just kind of hang out with the fellas tonight, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes wives or husbands don't take that well. <laughs> sometimes they do. <laughs> yeah, man. You know? <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Freaking, uh, you know, driving around. I used to be like multiple cities hanging out and doing things with people. Like sometimes I miss that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking with my wife about it and, you know, just telling her, hey, you know, sometimes I want to go over to the lake and, you know, see what's happening. Sometimes I want to hang in the streets with my dudes and, you know, kind of update them with my life and try to be an example. Like it's tough, man. And trying to keep, uh, how can I put it? <clears throat> Trying to stay a good influence amongst, you know, turmoil sometimes. It can be hard just because you got to speak their language sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, my wife, she understand that. So, yeah, man, I can I can definitely uh, relate to that, man. That That's one life change for yeah. me. That's kind of I won't say it's hard, yeah. but it, it's it's always on my heart, man. Trying to trying to showcase and be a good example to people. Dude. Did you guys go through that stage in your in early in your marriages? Like, Cal, did you kind of have a time where it was like, all right, Savannah, I kind of want to, you know, like I've been around you all day, every day. Cool. I love you. I got to go to the I want to, I want to go, I want to go shoot some hoops with the guys, man. Just, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it starts in that honeymoon phase when you first yeah. get married, you know, because, you know, before we got married, it was just like, you know, we'd hang out. I did one of each other's house and then we have to go home late at night. Oh, I can't wait till we're married. We could just be together and just <laughs> yeah. have to leave and all yeah. that. But um, but yeah, so we was definitely <clears throat> I feel like we both was a little clingy, clingy to each other. We just didn't really hang out with a lot of friends. It was just more just us. And um, but yeah, I definitely I don't think it was necessarily an issue, uh, but I would definitely feel myself like you know, I just want to go hang out with my cousins or something. Or yeah. sometimes I didn't always get that opportunity or get that, you know, leeway. Um, especially when, you know, junior came around. Um, and then we got the house and then just more responsibilities came. And I found right. myself like less and less opportunities to kind right. of do my own thing sometimes. Yeah. Um and so now, think, now sometimes we get together or get out as guys it's like a, a cage bird set free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel yeah. sometimes. 100%. Yeah, not not just because of the wife, but because of the kids and just all the responsibilities that you know you'd be jumping at the chance to go hang out with the fellas, you know what I mean, just for a few hours because it's just like you can just kind of you know be 20 year old Calvin again or you know Man. 20 21 year old Ernest again, you know what I mean? Eat yeah. tis back in the day. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ever I'm had a, those I'm moments? a different man now. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Kenny, you ever had those moments and then you're like, man, I miss my wife, man. I'd rather be at home. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. It depends on what I'm doing. Like, you know, if I'm somewhere and it ain't working out. Working <laughs> out. Working out. I, it can be everything could be working out. Not having a, I mean, if it's everything's working out great, yeah. I mean, I still, you know. You know, but there's times where it's like I've been. It, it, it's not like I'm itching to go back home. It's like you mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying like I'm home is home, home sweet home. But it's like you know, it's nice to kind of get a change of pace. You know, do something different. I think it's you just know? the responsibility thing too. It's like yeah. you know, especially with kids. I think this is more relevant to when we have kids. Had yeah. kids started having kids. Right. Um, yeah. It's just like the responsibility mark is just. Like every time you at home, you got to be thinking, you got to be, you know, uh, yeah, sober minded, you know, and productive. That's at least that's how I feel sometimes when I'm at home and that can get tiring. And mm-hmm. so, you know, if I can just, you know, get out, you know, be like, what is it? Play basketball, hang out with mm-hmm. my cousins. We go do something, even if it's just playing video yeah. games. It's just something where I don't have to worry about responsibilities, which I yeah. think is healthy where you yeah. just need to take a break. Um, and I feel like the same way about vacations, like family vacations. I feel like that's necessary at least yeah. once or twice a year, Absolutely. just so you're not having to worry about the responsibilities of home. That escape takes some time. Yeah, it takes a toll yeah. yeah. on you. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. Yeah, yeah, because it is, as husbands, we got so many, you know, when, especially when you throw kids in the mix, you know, bills and work and man, I got to fix this and, Mm -hmm. you know, finances and just everything that comes with that and home ownership and all that. It's sometimes it's so, 
it's so healthy emotionally and mentally mm-hmm. to just be like, man, I just want to go somewhere where I can just laugh, take my mind off of this, even if it's just for a few hours. Right. You know, because some men sometimes we can get cracked, we can crack under the pressure a little bit. You know, we can get irritable because right. we haven't had that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and th- not that we don't love our wives, but sometimes, you know, if we're, if you're, if we're spending too much time, it can be like, uh, she want to go do this again. You know, like a um, job. Like, you know, I, job, like. right, 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 right. You don't want it ever to feel like that. You know, like, What's that saying? Like uh, time apart grows a heart, makes a heart fonder or something like that. I think you're pretty close. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Paraphrase a little bit. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Separation or time apart makes a heart grow fonder or something like that. Well, sometimes separating yourself from your spouse helps you appreciate them more. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's times where you, you know, you're away from your wife, you know, for a day or so. And you just, you know, just something about being apart sometimes. Yeah. It's like, you know, it, it makes you appreciate who you got at home even more sometimes, you know? So, um, but did you guys ever go through a period? Like, I know I did where it was like, you used, you, know, you used to do a certain activity with your wife all the time. Like say, for, like say, go to go to the mall or something like that. Like beginning in our marriage, she'd be like, you oh, let's go to the mall. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, you know, every time, you know, maybe after the first year or two, no, you know, no. I'm down. Like, yeah, yeah, I go, to, yeah, I go to the mall with you. Yeah, yeah, I go to Google mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, as the time goes on, you kind of like that changes, or it's like <laughs> your wife is like, "Hey, you want to go to the mall?" You like, uh, "Can I just stay here?" Yeah, this one, that's one chill. And me, yeah. Oh. And, and your wife is like, "What? What's what's wrong?" You, you know, it's like it's that change that happens. You know. You guys, did you guys go through that? I know I did. Yeah. That's me all day. That's me (laughs) all day. I hate shopping. So it's like, like, I used to do it a lot early on. Um, But now I use the kids as an excuse. I just stay here with the kids. You go do what you got to do. Yeah. You know, man, have fun. But yeah, I I don't know. If it's just like me and her, yeah, I might just do it. Um, Yeah. But I'll still fight my case. I'm like, "Uh, you don't want to just go? I can kill here, chill here, wait for you. Bro. You know, I love I, it. I love I it. I hate shopping with my wife, man. She got to go down every aisle. She got to see what's over here in the oh. corner, in the dark corner and stuff. We got to be like, go yo, I thought we came for socks. Why <laughs> exactly. we looking at that purpose? <laughs> exactly. Like when you go in the store, you got to have a certain, you know, direction that you go and get what you need and get out. You don't need to see what's going on over there on the other side of the store. Like, you know what I mean? like, yo, we came sale. for diapers. Why we looking at watches? <laughs> why are we looking at necklaces we came to get some deodorant like oh. <laughs> and i would act like one of those you know like how i used to do when i was little like you know my mom over here looking at clothes so i'm like I'm, I'm gonna go over here to the toy aisle like no i'll go over here to the tech side and see what's going on over here okay computers <laughs> laptops yeah. but then she'll come back like what why did you leave me i'm like oh my god we still here it's three hours later i'm gonna <laughs> <to> go home <laughs> yeah I feel like I do have to yeah. catch myself though on that, just because you know, like I like I've mentioned before, my wife's thing is quality time. So yeah. If, yeah. if she's throwing hints at me, like you don't have to go, but I mean, I like to go, I, and I would probably have to cave just because yeah. you know I know that there's some value in it now. So, but nah. any other regular days, yeah. like I'm not nah. really itching to go to nah. you know, the store with you, but right, I can. I you got to know your spouse, so yeah, yeah. I, I think that's another good point too, Ken. I mean, Cal, when it comes to uh, different stages in life is knowing your spouse's love language, right? Yeah. I don't think we talked a lot about that. I think we, we allude or talk about them, right? So knowing that my wife's uh, love language is quality time and words of affirmation, mm-hmm. right? right? And and I, and I, I learned this, I go through times and seasons where I'm real good at it. And there's times and season I'm absolutely horrible at it. You know what I mean? But keeping that and as a focus of one of the focus points in our marriage is so key too as well as we progress in different stages of life. And I've learned though, the more I do it, the more it becomes natural. Yeah. But my right. wife is a creative. So, you know, I just came like, babe, I love you. It's got to be like, it's got to be creative, bro. It's got to be creative. I got to write that for you. Your love, my love see, for you. See, I'll write it out. She'd be like, man, you said that already. 
I'm like, okay. Man. <laughs> Throw that away. <laughs> Back to the drawing new board. New bars. Right. Back to the drawing. New bars. New lyric, right. new bars. Right. right. <laughs> Dang. Hey. The funny thing is, like, that's part, but we adapted, though. Like, it's kind of like, it's crazy how we evolved, because, like, at first it was like, you don't want to go in the store? Why? You always go with me. Mm-hmm. And then as time went on, it was like, <laughs> It was like she almost started expecting that I don't want to go. And now she's like, you know, it's kind of better that I go by myself. That way I'm not dragging somebody who don't want to be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it, it kind of like That's worked funny. out in the end. You know, <laughs> but my um, wife, man, she like me, she played too much. So she'll be like, yeah, you know, it's probably best that I don't go. But you better come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then she she know, like, if I'm in goodwill with her after about 45 minutes, I'm like, uh. You know, I'm, I'm trying to find somewhere to sit down. I'm like, hey, I'm going to wait for you in the car. So she knows that if it was going without me, she has, like, unlimited time. And she can look as many things as she wants without having somebody walking behind her, like, <sighs> you know? So <laughs> so it's like, it worked out. It's you know real, what I'm saying? Bro. So now, it's real. I, but I, I like Cal's point, though, that I do go with her sometimes, you know, to kind of have that quality time. That's important. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny how we evolve. But, yeah, that love language is important, though. It remind me of that episode of Martin, man, when he was up in the shoe store with Gina. Oh, <laughs> they was in there for I don't know how many hours, but Martin <laughs> like seen dude with the magazines. <laughs> it's like, man, you can't be reading all those magazines. I'm reading every one of them. Like two <laughs> had the stack. Like, this big. <laughs> I would be that dude, man, with my uh, wife, man. You need right. some extracurricular activities in the mall. <laughs> all for right. Sure. All right. The hoop yeah. court in there, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, man. <laughs> Look, bro. So we're talking about different stages in life right now. <laughs> I had nothing. The ghost had nothing at the moment. <laughs> I was going to try to swing so, into the left right, field. Right, go right, ahead, right, right. Go ahead. Dip, dip, I got a question. Oh, oh, wait a second. My mic just fell. I'm sorry. It My daughter is down here. <laughs> sorry about Chaos. that. Chaos. So what about them couples that get married, that's been married already, um, but they're getting remarried, and they been marrying someone. This is their first marriage. So maybe mm-hmm. there's not a huge age gap. Maybe it's just, you know, this person was already married recently divorced or whatever and they come together and so if it's the wife or the husband it doesn't matter but they don't want to do the whole big wedding thing but this is this person's first wedding and so how do you how do you go about that how do you mean being a spectator or being no just being the the person that either or the person that wants the big wedding this is their first wedding and then you have the other spouse because they've already been married before it doesn't want to go through the seasoned spouse yeah, it doesn't want to go through the whole big wedding thing. Just want to keep it real light and simple. Mm-hmm. It so, depends on if if that spouse is the 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 male or female is is the wife future wife or future husband that wants the big wedding. Mm-hmm. Let's say let's say it's the husband that wants the big wedding. Okay, that makes it interesting because the wife generally in weddings uh, a lot of times the wives future wives will have a lot of the say so on what's going on. Mm-hmm. But some of the some of the yeah. guys come in, they have I only know some of this guy I'm in the world of weddings, but um sometimes the guys got some influence too as well. But I think I think that's a hard dialogue though. Um I, in, in my opinion, I think about a few different factors. Number one, can you afford it? <clears throat> number number two, what is your reasoning for the big wedding? And then number three, um there needs to be some compromise because yeah. you, because your season doesn't mean, um, doesn't mean the person that is that you're remarrying, um, uh, being their first wedding doesn't mean they shouldn't have a nice wedding of mm-hmm. whatever right. their dream is. You that's know what I mean? Right, right, um, right. that's how I see that. But I got another question after we answer this question, cause that, that brought something to my mind. I don't want to change. I want to shift gears. Go ahead. No, Ken, you Cal, what y'all thinking? You said what I thought, E, like, if this is this person's first marriage, you don't want to, you know, crush their dream of having a big wedding, if that's how they view it. Mm-hmm. Like, if I want to have, you know, my fraternity brothers in there, my guys that was at the bar, if I want to have, you know, church people. I mean, y'all see my wedding. There was a lot, <laughs> a lot of different people in there. 
Like you yeah. shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't kill that person's joy or their dream of having that, man. So, you know, yeah, you the seasoned person, you've been through this already. You had argument with the pastor in your first marriage, like, you know, walk it down, man. Compromise. Let that person have their time too. Yeah. So, I, I would say so, compromise. Yeah. So mm-hmm. deep question. And I don't know if you got to cut this out the podcast or not, but deep question, because I don't know what y'all going to say and how we're going to roll with this. And you guys were prepared for this question. How, okay. So in this case and situation, you guys already know me, I think deep, but uh, this person got married again and I'm going to make this reality, right? So was this person married because their wife died? Was it adultery or was it because they wanted to divorce their other spouse? Uh, and this just brings the topic of divorce biblically. What 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 does the Bible say about divorce and how it's it viewed biblically? And bro, you're bringing up a whole other topic, bro. I know, oh, I know, real. I know. That's why I said, I said, listen, we can say this for another podcast because I just got, we were just laughing and I just got deep. I, was oh, like, yeah. well, I don't know. Ernest don't gonna have to know. shut his brain off. I don't know. Yeah, see, listen, I ain't sleep good. <laughs> <laughs> so my brain doing nothing but moving. You know what I mean? Hey, we can say that for the next podcast, but I think that's a good topic to talk about is divorce has become a... Uh, so two things has come become common in, in the world now when it comes to marriage is number one, uh, uh, millennials and other generations are saying, well, I don't need to be married. I can, mm-hmm. I just need to be... Uh, we just need to be together Mm -hmm. so we can be together without commitment yeah and we can live for years together but we'll never have the title as husband and wife and um so that that is one thing that's happening but the second thing is happening people are getting divorced based off of whatever they feel yeah Mm. that's why i said what i said and (laughs) and this is going to sound crazy but feeling is not a thing in the Bible, right? Your feelings, it's not about your feelings right? and what you feel. And because that, that runs your, I mean, a lot of controversy happened in the churches because people feel a certain way and, and they don't take the word of God for what it is. I feel like that, that God wouldn't feel that way. So now you're God and you know how God feels about everything. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those are those are the issues that we face. And I, I think that it'd be good to have a dialogue, Ken, Cal, and D in the future, and talk specifically about maybe it's one of our last topics, because that's what we're talking about, the main reason why people get divorced. Yeah. But let's talk about what does the Bible start off with that? What does the Bible say about divorce and what is on and what is not? And yeah, and why sure. culture is starting to shift towards not having to be married and shift towards divorce off feelings. Um mm-hmm. And how do we, as men of God, represent the church properly when it comes to marriage? Absolutely. Sure. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to run with that? No, I'm, I'm down, <laughs> man. That's, yeah, that's one of the yeah, reasons yeah, why, yeah. like yeah. I said, man, I try to showcase my marriage to my guys. And, you know, I try to tell them things like, hey, man, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. Like, I try to be like a, <laughs> I won't say a fake mentor, but like the present mentor to certain people that I know, man, just trying to. Hey, I mean, you no. Know, yeah, sometimes uh, like you're talking, you know, Dr. You said show, showing your marriage off to other people. I mean, sometimes I think that's the best witness um, in a culture full of divorce and adultery and side chicks and you know just just Many you know and, 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 and like and showing people <laughs> right, right, and showing people that yeah. you know. I mean, we we all know people who were you know part of that boomer generation or whatever that you know have been married 50, 60 years, but showing people that it's not that's not an old thing that has passed that's still present today you know 20 30 somethings still committed for life to their spouse you know what i mean yeah I all those old like values one of the biggest, right i think one of those that's one of the biggest witnesses we can be for people man and in, in real life you know uh because i think people are looking for that and they don't even realize it can yeah. like, they don't even realize they're yeah. looking for an example like like that that whole feeling generation and right you know yeah. All that stuff, people, people straying away and getting away from what really matters, man. Your yeah. feelings ain't facts. Like sure. just because you feel that don't mean that that's the fact of your situation or the reality of your situation. Yeah. And depending on what you're subjected to, your feelings will lie to you deeply. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're subjected to ungodliness, your feelings is always going to be lied, lied to you. And some of us look at look for advice and people who are always in their feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know man. what I mean yep. and, and they true, take it bro. as golden they take it as golden they take it as truth 
Like so and so believe this. Well, so and so don't know what they're talking about. So and so marriage mean, crumbling. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how are you gonna believe somebody and you can see their fruit? She's right. You see what they're producing. So I mean, this is a totally different topic, man. We talking about stages in life, Kenny. Man. Let's get back. <laughs> we can see, get back to the topic fault, at e. hand, man. We get back. Yeah. To and we'll we'll continue this topic in the future. But the stages in life, I guess, I got a question, Ken. Um, is how how what what stage in life right now right now would you say you're at, and how have you um, a- allowed God to lead you through these stage through th- this stage? I'm sorry. What a good question, Ernest. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you are the question man. I am sometimes. Um, I'm going to put a question mark on your head like the Riddler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we don't need all that. <laughs> we don't need all that. Uh, no, that's that's a good question, man. I think right now, you know, me and my wife, we're, we're not. I mean, I'm not old, but I'm starting to, it's starting to hit me like I'm not getting any younger. You know what I mean? I saw that, Kevin. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna be 36 in a couple weeks, man. Ooh, and 36. it's like I'm on the I'm on the the uh, second half of almost 40. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like you get old. We're, huh? we're focusing like right now. We're kind of focusing on health. You know, um, I mean, my wife is doing better than me right now. She kind of doing the working out, eating good. I've been kind of slacking. I ain't gonna lie. Peace but, tastes good, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it do. It do, man. <laughs> Food tastes too good, but uh, <laughs> that's just donuts, man. That's my weakness. <laughs> hey, I plan on going to Marge's later. If uh, if see, I... man, see, yeah, donuts are good, brother. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. Health man. is great, though. Uh, but but also, like you know, we're in that season where we're kind of getting into a uh, um, understanding in our marriage. You know, where she has her time and I have my time, but we also have our time together, and. You know, I'm, I've been gaming a lot lately, and she's been kind of watching certain TV shows a lot lately. But I still have to make sure that we reconnect. You know, after where she's decompressing from being her her time with the kids, and I'm decompressing from work and kids. Um, How do you guys intentionally reconnect? Well, I just make sure that we at least have through a during a, in a busy day. I try to make sure that we at least have a conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I can tell sometimes. We haven't talked in a while because she has a lot to say and I have a lot to say. And so I make sure that we have that time, you know, um, because you just it's just healthy. You just have to, you know, you have to you, you can just feel disconnected if you don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes that stuff ain't even until the end of the night. Yeah. You know, kids in bed or, you know. Yeah. Um, and we just kind of laying in bed about to go to sleep or whatever. That's when that time happens, you know, but, but I think that's kind of, I don't know. That's, that's kind of the stage we're in right now, man. Uh, trying to set our kids up for success. That's been kind of big focus right now. You know, my son is about to be 10 and I'm already kind of thinking teenage years, Yeah. you know, and my other two are getting big too. And right. So that's been a kind of lot of our focus too, is how can we set them up? How, what are their gifts? What are their talents? What does God put in them? that we can cultivate, you know, that's kind of been it right there too. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Just, just kind of towards looking towards the future. Like, and like I say, I, I, I wish I could stay young forever, but that ain't the case. You know, I'm going to be 40 one day and one day I'm going to look, I'm going to be 50 and, you yeah. know, trying to, trying to also thinking about what moves I can make so where we can set ourselves up financially Yeah, so that I'm not, yeah, so that I'm not, you know, my kids can, I can help my kids buy their first car. I can help my kids pay for college tuition, hopefully, you know, mm-hmm. um, I can, I don't want to be 75 and still working a full-time job. Hopefully I can retire and, and my needs be met. You know what I mean? So for sure. yeah, I feel you. stuff like that. I feel you. So, so Cal, I guess I'm, I'm wearing a hat of Kenny right now. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about stages in life, you know what I'm saying? Stages in life. Stages in life. So, so Cal, with, with with the current stages that you are in life right now, is there is there uh, things in your your current stage that you are right now? Maybe speak a little bit about where you are, and maybe areas that you felt like, man, I, I should be doing better in this current mm-hmm. stage in life. Hmm, that's a good question. Um. I think a lot of our life revolves, revolves around the kids, um, you know, with them being so young um, in their formative years. Um, 
so a lot of our focus is just like on, you know, making sure, you know, Junior's going to be in kindergarten next year. Um, so, and we're homeschooling this year, we're trying to finish it off the year. Um, my daughter's only two. Um, so yeah, we're, I think we're just, that's our, our main focus. And then there's just things that come into play, like childcare and different mm -hmm. things like that. Cause my wife's working from home and, um, I don't know. Uh, so the, what was the second part of that question? Like, so right now in the stage of life that you are right now, kids, homeschooling, probably about to have number three, right, Cal? Yeah, I was going to mention that too. See, yeah. number three coming. I'm a prophet, I guess, but number three coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so preparing for all these different areas of life, but sometimes we can um, not be so focused on, I mean, doing things there's areas of growth. I'll just say that in, yeah, in every yeah. stage. Right. And how are you growing yourself in this stage, preparing for what you know is to come? What mm -hmm. are you doing to prepare yourself? That's a better, I guess, a better way of saying it. Yeah. Uh, I just think being locked in, like things like this help me grow, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. connecting with you guys, staying locked in um, on guys who, you know, you guys have families, you know, kids are doing well, your marriages are doing well. So it's just learning from, um, you know, the people in my life, um, the mentors in my life. And I think there's, there's a focus on finances, like Kenny was talking about and setting things up and investing. Um, that's really been uh, where my heart's been, you know, individually just trying to find different ways to invest and um, staying connected on what's going on in our, the world around us and how economies are changing, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but yeah, just trying to stay grounded and then mm -hmm. basically, and then just building my relationship with the Lord and staying prayerful more than ever in this yeah. season, for sure. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I think when I, if I look back and I don't have any regrets or anything, but um, I would just say, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. He, yeah, no, it's like good. ways. Listen, to... it's all spontaneous, man. So it ain't. Yeah. I think you said some deep stuff, though. I think you said some really good stuff, though. Mm -hmm. uh, in stages in life, seeking counsel, right? Yeah. Uh, and having counsel, like for you, and I'm sorry, Ken, I'm playing you today. I'm Kenny Cotto. What's man, up, y'all? You, you know what I'm saying? I'm playing the host today. We're talking about stages you in think. life. All right. So, all right. So, if for you, Cal, you talked about counsel. How often do you seek counsel and where mm. do you find this counsel to help yeah. you walk through stages in life? Is this someone that's already been through it or just someone that gives you wisdom or is it multiple people? I, I'm just trying to get like a realness behind no, this because we're all going through different stages in life right now. That's good. Um, I literally just went out to lunch with my mother yesterday mm. um, and we had a lot of good conversation just about child rearing and mm. um you know, she, you know, that was her major. That's what she does. She, that's her spear uh, mm -hmm. is just um, early childhood and things like that. So I get a lot of good nuggets from my mother and my father who, uh, you know, works in, in a school setting and works with at youth risk or at. Every at youth. youth. At risk. <laughs> okay, bro, I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so those two right there, um, apart from you guys and being in fellowship with you guys, <clears throat> My mother's been a huge help in that in that area and then trying to managing through the life stages and the different ups and downs and roller coasters that through my marriage um she's really been there for my wife as well um Dope. i think that's a huge part of growth for me oh. having a good foundational parents you know what i mean yeah i think i yeah. think you might be breaking up a little bit too cal uh, maybe your internet connection is frozen. Yeah, it's a little unstable. Where okay. um, I keep, but did you hear what I said? Yeah, I, yeah, I think we heard yeah, majority of it for yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So hey, hey, hey. So Ken, I'll continue with this round table here. So I did a question here. Um, so D, you forgot. Uh, yeah, no, nah, man, <laughs> y'all must have forgot. Uh, who wrote that song? You ever heard that song? Roy you Jones. know who wrote that my song? Baby, my man. boy Roy Jones Jr. Know, you man. know what I'm saying? Shout out Last to my man. <laughs> Pensacola, Florida. You know what I mean? Pictures. Shout out to so, my man Roy. Right now, playing Joe. together. Yeah. Inside <laughs> Joe to those who are watching. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. 
Aaron just brought that up slickly. Yeah, cause... yeah, yeah. I like that. You like uh, that, huh? <laughs> Segway. He was flying. <laughs> Where were you flying? Uh, Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola. Yeah. He was flying to Pensacola for work. Yeah, yeah, it was for work. For work. Mm-hmm. And um, this dude was at the airport. And he Man, sends us a picture. Yeah. And <laughs> he's posing with none other than Roy Jones Jr. himself. The legend, baby. So, the of legend. course, I was like, what? Pound for Man, pound. Crazy. Immediately when I saw best that picture. That's the best. Right. So, so y'all need to link up with E if y'all pound. need any connection. Because he in there nah, now. He don't made it. He don't made it. <laughs> I don't know where I made it to, but <laughs> hey, hey, Ernest, Ernest humble too, because I would have yeah, posted yeah. that on social media. Yeah. Like, I know yeah, I didn't even like, do it. Look, I didn't even stunting. do it, man. You think you got hands? I got people for you. Man, <laughs> you're, you're funny, man. I, I you got know, goons. The funny thing right. is, man, I've been I've been rubbing shoulders with a few celebrities lately. Man, tell me. Um, you I had don't a, need to know I, names. You know what I'm uh, saying? Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I was about to name drop. I was going to name drop. I'll stop. We might might (laughs) see Ernest on the Hollywood movie or something. Exactly. Nah, man. I know that dude. Nah, we ain't about to. Tyler Perry got some roles for you. We ain't doing no Tyler Perry either. (laughs) We ain't doing no Tyler Perry. You said Tyler Um, Perry got some roles for you. (laughs) (laughs) We ain't doing that. You're gonna see me in a play singing. You're gonna, you gonna have some it. fake braids. No, nah, we ain't gonna, gonna see me doing that. Unless you more. more. No. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna see that. No. Um, um, so we talking about stages in life, fellas. <laughs> so we talking about stages in life. All right. So the I mean, right now you're at an interesting stage in life where you have a baby, another baby on the way. Just had nobody even know that, but I knew you was right? gonna say it. Oh, it's not out there, bro. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, I know him for a I little bit. So my, my apologies. I'm cool. I'm cool. My apologies. You know, you straight because I was gonna bring uh-huh. it up. So you okay, straight. okay. So all right. So now that's out there to the world, y'all here. D has a baby on the way. Um, and uh, so you know. your, your 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 son now is how old? Uh, he'll be two in August. So he's so, uh, twenty months. Wow. Oh, 20 months. When did we stop counting months? I, you know what? I was never a month counter until yeah. I had a kid. So yeah, yeah, I always yeah. hated that. Yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. like, man, he, he 136 months. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So um, let me see my math right. I think after, two, after 24 <laughs> yeah, months, I just yeah, like, man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You two. Right at two, that's when yeah. you cut it off. Yeah, cut yeah, the months yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he 39 months. Like, yeah. no, nah, dog, yeah, cut bro. that. I knew somebody got into the hundreds one time. But anyways, all right, we're talking about stages of life, right? So, D, you, you just had a, you got two 20-month-old baby. And you're having another baby now, and you guys been married for how long? Uh, a little bit over three years. So you guys are at early stages of marriage. You are early stages as being parents and adding number two in your life. So it's a lot of things going on, and 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 the and the Dean household right now. Mm-hmm. So you're at interesting stage in life right now. So talk to me about how you feel in this stage in life. And how how you are managing through this stage in life right now. And maybe talk about some failures. Oh, uh, yeah, man. So um, right now, like I said, about to have baby number two. She's cooking right now. Um, this stage in life, man, like, I won't lie to you. Everything feels great. Everything feels good. <clears throat> I'm building and working on a lot of different things. Um, I thought about making a YouTube channel. You know, just to, you know, branch off of this one a little bit. Uh, um, looking at, you know, doing some career career building. Um, looking into the, uh, you know, IT, IS workspace, uh, coding, app development. Like, you wouldn't even know I'm a computer nerd. But those of you that do know me know that I can get busy behind some, you know, keyboards and mouses and, and get mouses. inside of your computer not in mouses. I mean, not in mice. <laughs> mice, but mouses. Okay, um, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I, I can, you know, I can, I can break a computer down, put it back together and probably hack your joint too. Ooh, but no, man, lot, um, every, everything is, 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 it's, it feels good now. I won't lie. Like I feel really blessed. I thank God every day I wake up. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm here in this, you know, in this house. I got the, you know, I got stuff, not saying that I'm a materialistic person, but I just wake up, you know, thankful, man, and blessed. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but no, um. So with all of that, like failures, like a big failure for me. Like I still, you know, deal with bitterness. 
So like, you know, I'm still, you know, in my spirit, you know, spirit life, I'm, you know, in my spirit closet, I'm praying, I'm doing what I got to do, but I still suffer a little bit of bitterness from, you know, the things that happened to me in the past, uh, you know, still dealing with not as much, but still deal with rage a little bit, like not toward my wife or not my, you know, my baby, but like thinking about the things that happened to me and, you know, wanting to choke somebody. <laughs> so, um, I, I consider that a failure just because, you know, being this deep in Christ and, you know, changing my life to go in a direction that's better than what I thought it you know could be. I, I consider that a failure um, with my kid trying to, you know, teach and um, mold him into a, a young man of Christ and just with developmental stuff. Like he's a really smart kid. He's just not talking that much. He knows a few words, but he's not talking. So um, I consider that a little bit of a failure just because when I was two, I taught myself how to read. And then I look at him, I'm like, man, you should be reading and you should be doing this. But <laughs> You said when you were two, you taught yourself how to read. Yeah, man. <laughs> how do you, um, all right, I won't get into that. Go ahead. No, I, I, can, I can explain <laughs> it to you. So when I was younger, like watching hey, cartoons and stuff, <laughs> I don't know if you uh, remember like the preview channel with the show scrolling down, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you, I would look at the channel oh, yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I don't, I don't know if people, you know, I'm, I'm old school, I guess. I'm older. But anyway, I used to channel watch one. like, uh, <laughs> I used to watch like Scooby-Doo and Ninja Turtles and stuff like yeah. that. Yep. So I look at the number. I try to copy the number with my hand. Okay. I guess my, my older brother told me this. So copy the number, find the channel on the, you know, on the preview channel, find that number. And I'm like, oh, okay. I know that that's Scooby-Doo or whatever. My brother's like, how do you know that? I'm like, because look, I turn it to the channel and then I turn it back there uh, to the preview channel. And then I guess that's how I taught myself how to read, just looking at those words and copying them with my hand at two. Who would have thought? <clears throat> Damn, bro. But I anyway, man, uh, with all it. that stuff going, like I said, man, trying to take care of my kid. I I'm think I'm trying to teach dad. my son the ABCs at two. Yeah, it's, mm. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him everything right now <laughs> and trying to compare him to myself is like, you know, I consider that a failure. I know it's not, but that's just, you know, something that I dealt with. Yeah. But, and, so. And so I respect the too, that you are uh, having moments of vulnerability here too, as well. But I wouldn't say what you're dealing with in the areas of bitterness and rage as failures, but I would say they are struggles, right? So there are struggles that, um, that you are allowing God to deal with in your life on a daily basis and to uproot those, those areas so that you can allow um, the fruit of spirit or the Holy Spirit to intervade uh, or intervade, intervade, intervene, intervene, intervene. <laughs> what the heck is an intervade? Or yeah, I was going to say invade and intervade. All right. So um, spiritual haircut, <laughs> intervene, intervene. spiritual spirit. You say what? <laughs> I said a spiritual haircut, intervade. Spiritual hey. intervade. <laughs> so, but my question though, to this, as we're talking right. about stages in life and then you got into vulnerabilities, man, is we all have struggles, right? We all have different things we deal with, right? And we all have different things we deal with in different stages of life. And at your current stage, you realize that you have bitterness and rage that you're dealing with right now. So now I need I to talk. To let's talk. Let's <laughs> talk to the listeners right now. And maybe Ken, this is the end. I don't know, but yeah. Let's talk to the listeners right now. Like how? Okay, so we. Sh I have struggles right now since we're there, and I I'll ask you, D. Like, 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 if we don't allow God to deal with those areas they become deeper rooted in our soul and our spirit, meaning this, that they yeah. become what we naturally will become. Meaning, in other words, everything we say out of our mouths now will be bitter right. or rage become bigger thing. Now, smaller things are getting you to be, ah, Super because terrible. I have not allowed God <laughs> to deal with those areas of my life yeah. fully so now ken and yeah. cal D, we got to talk about how do we allow god to deal with our struggles and when we're when we know we have struggles how do we allow god to intervene and deal with these issues so we don't allow them to cause havoc in these stages in life where we're at in marriage That's um, good. that doesn't That's cause good. issues yeah. and with our with our kids like talk mm -hmm. to me like how 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 does yeah. how do we allow god to deal with these things yeah, that's good. Uh, we can end on that, uh, on that question. Um, you know what? Uh, old habits are hard to break. Hmm. I'll just end on that. Like old habits are hard to break. God has really 
you know, speaking on the earlier question when you talked about, you know, what stage of life are we in right now? Yeah. Uh, is a lot of it is breaking old habits, yeah, breaking bad habits, you know, and those are, um, disciplining our kids is easy. Sometimes pointing out flaws in other people is easy, mm-hmm. but like disciplining ourselves is probably sometimes the most difficult thing you have to do. Yeah. Um, breaking habits that you've been doing for years or old mindsets that you've had for years is one of the most difficult things to do. Um, and, but you know what? I would tell anybody watching, I don't care if you're 20, I don't care if you're 80. Mm-hmm. It's never too late to break old habits and build new habits. You know, sometimes, you know, I don't like when people talk like they did already. Like, oh, you know, well, you know, I'm, and it's like, no, you still got time. You know how you still got time? Because you're still alive. Yeah. You know, so yeah. let's say you did make some bad decisions. It's okay. You're still alive. You know, I don't care if you're 30, 40, you know, maybe you in a dead end job, you know, it's never too late to make a career change. Don't let people think, oh, you, you, you too old now. Just, just be happy where you are. Like it's always, it's never too late to go back to school. It's never too late to, you know, maybe you got, you got an addiction that you can't break. You know, it's nothing too hard. The Lord can't break off your life. If you are determined to do that, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and that could be some of the most difficult things, but, and I'll leave on this. My last thing I'll say, you know, somebody, I think it was somebody read on social media somewhere, but somebody said something powerful, like what you don't conquer yourself, your kids will deal with, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And so that is one of my biggest uh, motivators to change myself is knowing that if I deal with this, I can show my kids that this is beatable. And also I can, they don't have to deal with it. Like I dealt with it, you know? So my son is 13. He don't got to deal with the stuff I dealt with at 13 Mm -hmm. because of the changes I made to myself, the things I had to conquer so that they don't deal with that in the same way. So yeah, man. So it's definitely one of my motivations too is, is so I can, you know, show my kids like, look, God did this in my life. You can do it too, you know, or, you know, it's possible. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <clears throat> I um, love it. Can can so yeah. I actually Cal, I'm gonna ask yours a little different because can answer it in a, in a way of that it's never it's never too late that never. that God is God is so good that I mean He gives us the ability to 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 um of life every day and if He gives you life you have the ability to change you have the ability to to take on that task you have the ability it's never too late right so. Talk to me about this, Cal, since I Ken gave me the, the, the mic as the host at the end of the seg, you know. What yeah. I mean? Um, um uh talk to me about like how do you how do you get through your struggles? Like, how do you get through it? Yeah. <clears throat> Community for sure. Um having that uh that will to change because that's important. And kids do help, like like you said, Kenny, having that will to change, um, especially with me. You know, my son has my name, and so it's like, I, I that's that's pressure for me. So it's just like, you know, I can live up to my full potential, and you know, I have him and, re- and raise the bar and things like that. And then right. overcoming things a lot gives me uh, the tools I need to feed into him because now I my witness or my testimony can help him through those things, and my daughter as well. Uh, but I think, you know, once you decide to submit these issues to the Lord and, you know, really allow God, give God enough space to where he can really work things out in your life um, to get through it, I think, and because it's not an instant process for a lot of a lot of scenarios um, is that we can't be so hard on ourselves when we do mess up. Uh, I think sometimes when we, you know, slip or fall, we get so down on ourselves and then we kind of block God out from trying to, to work in us when we just can come back to him freely, you know, for forgiveness, we can come back to him. And, you know, like I said, just give that problem up to him and just allow him to continue to help us grow. And even when we do mess up, we have that mindset of, okay, God is still working these things out of me. I'm still growing, you know, nothing is, I'm not backtracking, you know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like that's sometimes we can go in those spells 
and mm-hmm. we just take ourselves out the game because we just feel like, oh, I backtracked, you know, I got to start from scratch, you know, God's not hearing me no more. It's like I'm messing up and things like that. And so, which is really not about you. You know, God is for you. God is always uh, for you. So he's always looking out and trying to work those things out of you, but you have to give him enough freedom to do it and not yeah. be so hard on yourself. <laughs> um, so I guess that, that would just be one, yeah. one way. I think it's good too. I it's think it's good. good. Um, real good, actually. Um, and D, if I were to speak directly to you, I'm sorry I'm calling you out on the podcast because you oh, you had a vulnerable bro. moment. You know what I mean? You're my brother, so I can do this sharpen, right. Sharpen All right the so iron. you already know. All right. So I think the first step too, sometimes when we deal with bitterness, because I, I've dealt with it before, is that I had to learn how to forgive. Mm. And I and I think that's that's one big piece there to to be able to go through this process of eliminate the bitterness that you feel. You have to first learn how to forgive, even if you don't disagree, even if they were super wrong, even if they were in the wrong 100 percent, you still have to learn how to forgive because forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. And it's for you to allow once you do that, God can work on your heart because now they're no longer a, 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 a anchor that's pulling you down. Now, God can be that anchor like, Lord, I forgive them. Even though I don't agree with what they did to me, I don't agree how they treated me. I don't agree how they saw me. I don't agree what they did to me, but I forgive. And now I want you to deal with my heart. Mm-hmm. And then once you allow God to deal with the heart, meaning you said, come on in, deal with this bitterness. Come on in, deal with this rage. Come on in, deal with my, my thoughts that I have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then God can work. And, and honestly, Ken and Cal said it like, it's an everyday process. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. It's not. It's not a one day moment. And, and D, I'm not calling you out. We all have struggles. We all deal with different things, right? We all have different moments in life, and we all have things that we need a savior yeah. to deal with on an everyday basis. You, mm-hmm. You're just my brother, and you're vulnerable. So I, I, I never like to hear vulnerability and not because other people are dealing with what you're dealing with. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You know I, I, mean? I, I appreciate this is this is what the podcast is for, man. Like, like yes, yeah, I, I appreciate it. You know, holding me accountable and yeah, you, you know, yeah. you giving me the real. And yeah, and, and you calling this out is is also helping others. You know what yeah. I mean? Men have a hard time being vulnerable. Kenny, know this? I'll ask you the same question thirty times until you say, "Yeah, man, I'm struggling." Mm-hmm. Um, because at first everybody's like, "I'm good." Yeah, I'm good for real, man. I'm good mm-hmm. for real, man. God, God is good. Life is good, man. I'm like, how you doing, man? You know, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm yep. straight. I'm like, how you doing, man? You know what? <laughs> well, man, I'm not really good man. at all, bro. I'm not really good. I'm struggling. My mind, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you be like, you just say that like you three times. Yeah, man. And some some people <laughs> yeah, need that yeah. person to ask, "How are yeah. you doing?" Yeah, so a lot yeah. of people don't have that person. Yeah. We don't have that in life. And we need that in different stages of life, bro. We need yeah. people to hold us accountable. Man. We need counseling. Yeah, we need sure. the word of God. We need Jesus to have, we need revival. We need all these different moments, man. We yeah. need them. And, and honestly, guys sometimes struggle with allowing God to be God and, and allowing their hearts to be open and vulnerable so God can do his mm-hmm. work. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Can you yeah. imagine? I think my boy P Dub. You guys know who P Dub is? Can no, you gotta know, man? No. You a, you a hip hop dude, right? P Dub. His name is Willie Moore Jr. Oh well, yeah, I know him by that name. Yeah, <laughs> my boy Willie Moore Jr. All right, so oh. Willie Moore Jr. said something like this. He said, "It feels so good to be my authentic self, so God can really work in my life." I'm paraphrasing, right? Being who God has created you to be, fully, and. And as you are being who God has created you to be, not saying perfect, but I'm saying you being who God created you to be with your purpose and walking in that every day will give you peace, will give you all you need. And so my goal is to walk in where God wants me to be. And the truth behind that, God does not want us to be attached to anything that's ungodly. For sure. So uh, lust, bitterness, rage, pride, anxiety. Oh, homosexuality, fornication, adultery, all, all yeah. these different things, right? Pornography, all, that, all these different things that we attach ourselves to. God does not want us to be attached to those things. He wants us to be attached to the fruits of the spirit. And let me stop. Yeah. This is not my own message, so I'll stop. We're talking about different stages oh, in life. Ahead, no, man. Yeah. We're Everything talking about different real, stages bro. in I, life. No, go ahead, let's, ask, let's ask the same question to Dion. Oh, and actually, no, he already answered the question, right? Yeah, he answered it. Okay. Okay, I'll just say with yeah. dealing with everything, man, like I, like I said, I'm still praying. I'm still, you yeah. know, reading my Bible. Um, what John 15, five, uh, you know, I am the branch. 
and you are the Ooh, vine. I was reading yeah, that the other yeah. day. That's that's my verse right there. You know, if, if you reside in me, I reside in you. Without me, you can do nothing. Yeah. Uh, and I paraphrase that, but that was the first verse that, you know, got me to, got me saved, got me to Christ, you know, locked me in. And like I said, I, I reflect on that verse every day. And like I said, I'm reading every day, but I have no reason to be angry. That's the thing. I have no reason to be angry. I have no reason to be bitter because God has blessed me so much, mm-hmm. but I still deal with that that thorn in my side. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, it, it can, it's, it can happen to anybody. It can, it can yeah. be, you know, pastor, first lady, yeah. pulpit, deacon, you know, anybody. So absolutely. Absolutely. Know that, know that, you know, we all have a struggle like Ernest said. So yeah, right. Right. how would you answer that same question, Ernest? And I'll end, we'll end on that. Um, you know, Good this one. stage in your life right now, yeah. uh, you know, business owner yep. full time, Three kids. Oh my God! Kids involved in sports, Jeez. celebrity, you know, social you, light. Yeah, yeah. You know don't forget, the, don't forget my celeb social life. Celebrity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm busy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and everything going on with your life right now. What has kind of been some of the things that you've been struggling with, but also what has been some of the things that yeah. you've been uh, focused on as well in this stage yeah. of your life? So I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. I've been struggling with uh, managing so many different hats at the exact same time and I wanting bet. to do them well. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I've been trying my best to do them well, but I, I had to learn how to do, and I'm learning how to not only delegate, but learning how to trust others to get the job done well. Um, so that's one big issue. And then also I learned how I learned, I've been learning the areas that I lack in communication. Hmm. And areas I could do way better in communication all the way around and how, and then the the older I get, Ken, I'll be honest with you, man, the older I get, I learn how much stuff I just don't know Mm -hmm. and how much I need God to intervene. Um, And so I'm learning uh, delegation, how to wear the proper hats and, and when to, to, to say no, because I'll start saying yes to a lot of stuff. My wife would be like, man, you say yes to that. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I got to, though. I got to do this. And I've been mm-hmm. asked to take on some major stuff, like committees and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But I don't have to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. I do it yeah. because yeah. I want to impact the community. Right. Um, and gotcha. th- but there has to be a level of there has to be a level of balance. And that's what I'm learning. So mm-hmm. from a communication standpoint, though, I'm learning if I'm specifically talking about marriage, I'm learning how to just be a better communicator to my wife. Right. How to be more clear in what I'm saying and what I'm thinking versus right. saying, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know you what should I mean. know these things. You know what That's I mean. Good. You know what That's I mean? Good. So I'm, I'm learning that. And then I'm also learning how to make sure I make a priority of what's most important. Um, and um, it, it, I, I say these things. A lot of times I say the things on podcasts or ministry moments or on anytime I do a chapel talk or whatever I have to do is every time I teach, I teach from a place of vulnerability, but I also teach to myself. Yeah. So typically the things I say, I'm talking to me. So mm-hmm. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to, um, I'm learning how to just um, get back to what's most important. And honestly, what's most important is, is relationship with, with the Lord, Absolutely. honestly. And, and, yeah. and having that deep rooted relationship where, that is my focus before I focus on anything else. Yeah. And I got lost. I'll be honest with you. I got lost in focusing on all the different tasks I had. And God was a part of my schedule versus the priority in my schedule. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm getting yeah. back to a place where I'm like, God, you're the priority. And then everything else falls underneath that. Even my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I got to a place where I got tired. You know what I mean? And I think my tiredness came because... God was a part of my schedule, but not the priority at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There you have it, man. We, we try to be honest and transparent, man. You know, so hopefully people will be, you know, be the same in their own lives. Who's watching, who's listening. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, I know sometimes people are watching. They're like, oh, man, that's cool. You guys have been friends for so long and da, 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 da. And maybe you're looking at this and be like, man, I need my own tribe. Like, 
seek out, sure. pray the Lord help you make connections because we all need that accountability, that ability, or that freedom to be vulnerable and be our authentic selves. Like Ernest said, so healthy, so crucial. Um, it's liberating, man. You know, so uh, keep that, man. Get it. Get you a tribe of your own if you don't have one. I know this is kind of off topic, but get you a tribe, man. Get you a oh, tribe. Yeah. Get you a family of believers, of like-minded people. I don't care if you're a woman or a man listening to this. Get you a tribe, man. Um, your you will grow exponentially if you're doing life with others as a believer, man. You know, so many sure. people with YouTube pastors and you know, are just kind of living this thing by themselves or living this thing alone or not really actively seeking out Christian relationships for the sole purpose of growth, accountability, vulnerability, and stuff like that. Right. Uh, and, but that's so important. So just want to drop that on there before we close. Amen. Um, yeah. Amen. Yeah. So sure. that's a wrap. It's the tribe table talk, baby. Tribe table we'll talk. Here. We'll be there. We'll be everywhere soon. Tribe. See you next time.